All right, so in this politics video, I want to talk about President Trump's response to the coronavirus and the George Floyd social unrest and how his response was the most radicalizing catalyst of the past decade, in my personal opinion. So there are three main points here that I want to discuss. Number one is COVID-19. Number two is the social unrest due to the resurfacing of systemic racism, specifically through the murder of George Floyd on camera. And number three is President Trump's response as an administration. So number one, COVID-19. This is the pandemic context behind all of this. So understand that we have a worsening situation globally, as well as a particularly bad situation in the United States where infections are increasing and deaths are increasing. And we never really got out of this first wave. So in the beginning, we did close the border with China and had a limited lockdown eventually on a localized basis, meaning one county, if it got bad, it would lock down, but the neighboring county could remain open, hypothetically. So people could still go back and forth, mingle, and then continue to spread the virus. Now, it's understood you can't completely shut down the economy. That makes sense. You can't close all businesses. So... In all honesty, I'm not sure what the exact solution here is. However, my point is the limited lockdown was not terribly effective or not as effective as we'd like it to be for limiting the spread of coronavirus. Now, per the response to this and COVID-19, so like I said, the closed border and limited lockdown, but many times it was dismissed as a democratic hoax and pretended to be fake, tried to say it would magically disappear, and such. And eventually, President Trump admitted that he kind of technically was in favor of suppressing testing because if the numbers are low, then infections are low, and it looks better for the administration and the president himself. Basically, it saves face. However, the truth is, to do something about a pandemic, you desperately need the proper data. So the suggestion of actually faking or ignoring the numbers, right, it is, is quite extreme, and many people would react that way. Meanwhile, we have unemployment due to the way we implemented the lockdown, and a weakening economic situation of many Americans. Meanwhile to all this, there's a push to reopen schools or a threat to cut their funding if they do not reopen properly and fully. And the thing is, schools to reopen properly would arguably need more funding to figure out how to handle all this. Because given that we're having difficulty convincing adults to wear masks at times due to personal freedoms, how can we expect that kids would wear masks and properly social distance and slow down the spread between each other and between their parents and other adults and teachers they come in contact with? So this goes into our bigger problem is that we have developed a somewhat toxic countrywide version of individualism, which basically means that there is a somewhat unhealthy obsession with freedom at all cost. And that's what's prevented us from having universal mask wearing. Now, I'm not even sure if a national mandate of masks is the right way to go. But the truth is that a suggestion of wearing masks in many states is not going well and results in most people not wearing masks, despite whatever the government says, due to individualism, due to distrust of the government, and so forth. So, like I said in the beginning, number one, COVID-19, the response to that has been essentially 
denial and downplaying of the virus and unspecific plans when in reality we need a nuanced plan for how to deal with the situation. And number two, we have the George Floyd social unrest. So not too long ago, George Floyd was murdered on camera by a police officer for allegedly using a $20 bill to purchase something. The police came and killed him by kneeling on his neck so that he essentially couldn't breathe. And despite the fact that they were investigating some crime, potentially, obviously most people saw the video and it's not right to publicly execute a person over something like this. So as you'd expect, there was a strong opinion from the public that this is wrong. And if there's any chance that anything like this is happening throughout the system, we should do something about it. So obviously people were pushing for that. Now, this resulted in the rise of the Black Lives Matter movements and protests. Now, concerning this whole thing, the communication about George Floyd from President Trump and the administration was, you could call it, tone deaf in a way, where it did not really have a nuanced approach to dealing with this stuff. So I believe that fueled more of the protests and more of the anxiety and unrest. In addition, agitators mixed into the protests, causing lots of problems and committing more crimes, which obviously are not right. And there was, was a lot of property damaged, as well as other people murdered as well, or attacked. And that's obviously not right. So the communication aspect of this is what I would suggest as a more proper way to handle it is to divide the group and the movement into this is the message of the peaceful protesters and this is the message of the agitators. And obviously the agitators' message is not right and must be condemned, while the peaceful aspect of it, you need a nuanced response for how to deal with systemic racism and a suggestion of what we should do about it. But the response from President Trump was instead to dominate the streets, his choice of word, domination. And he sent in the National Guard and military, essentially, to deal with the protests. And he sent in the feds. And this appears to have fueled the unrest further and the ongoing riots and things going on around the country. So the issue here is if you have to rule by force, force is always temporary. And the minute you let up on the force, if people are desperate or have a message or no voice or no ability to communicate their message, they, it will result in civil unrest, essentially. So you need a nuanced response to a complicated issue like dealing with systemic racism and police brutality. So ignoring it or trying to debunk the numbers when there is plenty of legitimate evidence that these things are going on is not a strong communication strategy for this. And it will result in people turning against you. So the point of all this is you should understand why all of the civil unrest is going on. And if you understand why, you have an idea for the type of response that it warrants where you can keep the peace and the law. You can do something about pr police brutality, but at the same time, protect people, their property, and their lives altogether. So the combination of number one, COVID-19, number two, this social unrest recently sparked by George Floyd, and number three, the president's response from a top-down fashion, I believe 
has resu resulted in radicalization of a lot of people because they see the combination of these three things and they say, this is not who I am. And they turn against that message and they turn to the alternative. You can see this in voter registrations shifting from Republican to Democrat. You could see this in increasing polling for people saying the country's going in the wrong direction. You can see this in the increase of support for Joe Biden and decrease of support for Donald Trump in the upcoming election. So in summary, all of this is why I believe that this certain occurrence of events and President Trump's response is resulting in an extremely radicalizing catalyst of the decade. And time will tell how it affects minds and politics going into the future.